A feature that we've had in ERA for quite a while is called execution mode. And while it's been there for a while, it's not commonly used by many of our clients. We do use it extensively internally, but it's not a commonly used feature externally. However, uh, if you wish to use ERA in an operational mode where you're plotting real-time data and you're keeping track of things like friction factors and hydraulics as you go, execution was specifically designed for that purpose. And so what I'd like to do now is walk you through how to use that capability. Uh, assuming that you've got a planning file that you've created that has your trajectory and your casing points, etc. in it, uh, what we do to convert to execution mode is simply right-click on that planning file and through your drop-down list select execute and what execute will do is create a copy of your planning file you can call it whatever you want but the default name is just your original name plus this uh, execution in parentheses and now you have a file that uh, has the ability to add uh, real-time data from the rig now I'm not going to actually open up that file. I've got one that I've already created hidden off here to the side. So this is what I'll use for my example. So we'll just delete this one here. So this is my execution file that has some data in it. And if I double click, what you would see if you had just converted a planning file into execution is a screen that looks almost identical to your planning file. It's got your summary grid with all the loads highlighted. And how you get it to a mode where you can enter data is to simply right click on any operation that you're ready to start adding data to. So for example, let's say I'm drilling my intermediate two hole section, the 13 and a half inch hole. If I right click on that operation and I select execute, that will now gray out all of my load uh, boxes because uh, those numbers are now not determinable uh, until I start entering in some data. And you can see that, that the 13 and a half inch hole is broken up into three different sub ops, tripping into that hole, drilling that hole to a certain depth, and then tripping out of the hole. And if I click on any of them, what we'll see at the bottom of the screen is this input called op management or operation management. And this gives you the opportunity to add runs to a particular hole section. So let's say that I'm not planning on drilling that 13 and a half inch hole all in one run. Maybe I'm going to drill to 8,000 feet, not 80,000, 8,000 feet, and then I'm going to have a second run that goes to TD. Well, I've already defined in my wellbore builder where TD is for this whole section. So if I just want to drill uh, add another run that might have a different BHA or a different bit or different drill string, I just click Add Drill Op, and it will now add hole run uh, 13 and a half inch hole run number two starting at the beginning uh, the beginning of that interval is that run is at the end of my previous run and it will terminate at the end of the section and you could go on so on and so forth adding multiple runs to a whole section if that's what you intend to do or if that's what actually happens when you drill your well uh, i don't have any data in these 13 and a half inch hole sections so i'm going to uh, unexecute them and what we're actually going to focus on is my nine and a half inch hole, which I have added some data to. So I'm going to execute it. And within the EXE drill, if I double click on that, it will take us to what's called the data page. So the data page is where I list my off bottom data here at the top. This is what you measure at connections, picking up and slacking off the drill string, measuring the off bottom torque. These are the loads that are recorded when the bit's off bottom. The middle rows is where I would enter my on bottom data. So when the bit's physically on bottom, whether I be slide drilling or rotary drilling, uh, I would enter in my parameters here, ROP, uh, RPM, weight on bit, and those parameters would be used to calculate things like my predicted pump pressure, my predicted ECD, uh, it would predict whether or not I'm likely to encounter buckling. But this information is also used to compute my downhole mechanical specific energy. Now, in order to compute downhole mechanical specific energy, I have to also uh, keep track of how friction factors change in the well. And that is computed with my off bottom data. So I need both off bottom data and good on bottom data in order to predict downhole mechanical specific energy. Now that might not be the intent or purpose of why you're doing your monitoring, but for those of you that are interested in drilling optimization and using mechanical specific energy, both of these areas need to be populated with good quality data.
Now you'll notice that I've got a lot of rows here with no data in it, uh, simply because I'm importing data from different sources. I've got a lot of downhole temperature information that I use in my temperature model uh, that just comes from an MWD data dump, and it doesn't necessarily have anything else associated with it. So no other calculations will be done uh, with that data. I'm just using that for plotting downhole temperature. If I scroll down, though, you'll see on occasion I have a, a measurement or an entry here where actual drilling information is available, and that's what gets uh, used for my calculations. When there's yellow boxes, what the program is saying is I don't have enough information to do a full computation, so I'm not going to do anything here. I'll plot data if you give me data, but I can't do a calculation. As long as all the columns are white and not yellow, then ERA will perform a computation. Uh, the lowermost box is where you put in your mud properties, and as a very minimum, you need to put in the depth of mud weight, uh, the temperature that the mud weight was at when the density was, was measured, and then your six fan readings. Now, an expanded uh, input of your mud properties, if you unclick simplify, it gives you the opportunity to put in a whole bunch of stuff. You can put in gel strengths, low gravity solids, all sorts of things, which this can be quite useful if you're trying to track and monitor the condition of the mud. Uh, not necessarily needed for any of our torque rig or hydraulics computations, but very useful for monitoring and tracking, uh, performing surveillance on your mud. So it just depends on what you want to use it for. All right, so that's how I get my data in. There are two output boxes, the off-bottom HCLA and the on-bottom HCLA. HCLA stands for Hindcast and Look Ahead. Uh, Hindcast is calculating something that's already happened. Look Ahead is forecasting what will happen in the future. So if I click on off bottom, it will pull up my off bottom hook loads, off bottom torque, and the back calculated friction factor for torque, slack off, and pickup uh, using that actual data. And what drives the calculations from the last measured data point to TD are these boxes down here. These are my look ahead parameters as I forecast forward. So let's say that I'm planning on doing my pickup and my slack off measurements at 50 foot per minute instead of 100 foot per minute. Uh, because I've got my uh, hydraulic lift computation uh, working uh, automatically, it will adjust the predicted curves slightly depending on uh, that surge and swab effect that would result from different trip speeds. Or if I decided to do my pickup and slack off with the pumps on instead of the pumps off, uh, that would adjust the curves as well. Now, uh, in the hindcast region, all the data up here, uh, each one of those points is already being adjusted for the trip speed and flow rate or RPM that was used when those measurements were made. So these boxes simply drive the forecast region, not the hindcast region. Okay, let's uh, move ahead to on bottom. My on-bottom loads are, of course, when the bit's on bottom and physically drilling. And again, the look-ahead region, I've got data down to 22,000 feet. Beyond 22,000 feet, I'm forecasting. I can forecast flow line temperature and MWD temperature here in my temperature plot. I can forecast ECD sensitivity to rheology in this case, flow rate sens uh, sorry, standpipe pressure sensitivity to flow rate. Um, and we'll look at some of the other plots moving over to the right in just a minute. But these parameters will drive these plots. If I was doing uh, drilling ahead at higher flow rate, you'll notice that the curves will shift. They'll respond to whatever my uh, baseline parameters are. If I scroll to the right and look at some of the other plots, so we've got our standard you know, temperature, ECD, pump pressure. Uh, but also while on bottom drilling, I've got my actual ROP in black. And because in this well, I've defined the confined compressive strength of the earth. I also have a prediction of what the ROP should be, which is this teal curve. Assuming that my rock strength is correct, that blue curve is a prediction of what my ROP should be. Now that is driven off of my bit aggressivity factor. That's an important parameter. Uh, the default setting is 200. Uh, and in this case, I had to do some uh, trial and error in order to get that uh, predicted ROP to match what we actually saw in the field. So a bit aggressivity factor of 1500 does a good job of mimicking about what kind of ROP we had. Uh, and then we've got weight on bit. The black is the surface weight on bit. 
that was measured uh, at the at the rig floor, and then blue using our torque and drag engine, we're calculating what the actual downhole weight on bit was. So you can see that there is a, a slight difference between downhole weight on bit and surface weight on bit, but it's pretty minor. Uh, rotary speed here, I've got my surface rotary speed in black, and then blue is my calculated rotary speed at the bit. If I had a positive displacement motor or a turbine in the string, there would be a difference between the blue and the black, just simply uh, because of the additional power of a downhole motor. I also have ECD sensitivity to flow rate. We saw earlier uh, sensitivity to rheology. In this case, ECD is not terribly sensitive to flow rate, so it's not a major concern. Uh, the MSE plot shows me my calculated downhole MSE relative to my confined compressive strength. Now, the vertical pink line is my confined compressive strength. Many of you are probably more used to seeing surface MSE, and we do calculate surface MSE. It can be displayed by clicking on curves and then turning this box on. But we really don't like surface MSE. It's quite misleading, and it can lead you uh, to make decisions that are incorrect. And so for that reason, we turn it off by default. Uh, oftentimes it parallels downhole MSE, but it can tell you something different than what actual downhole MSE says. In fact, you may notice that the MSE is generally trending up. The surface MSE is trending up as we drill, when in reality, the downhole MSE is not really changing that much. There's a few places where it spikes up, but in general, it's not really changing. So uh, we normally turn that off. If you had an RWD tool in the string, a reaming wall drilling tool, we would also compute where we would differentiate between MSE at the bit and MSE at the under reamer. Uh, torque on bit, we've got our surface torque in black and then our, um, through torque and drag, calculated torque at the bit in blue. And then we also have our predictive torque at the bit, this teal curve, which is coming from our ROP model. And again, it keys in on the bit aggressivity factor. With a less aggressive bit, I would generate less torque at the bit. So this is another thing that we, through trial and error, uh, try to back into. Depth of cut. If I know RPM and uh, rate of penetration, I can calculate the actual depth of cut in black versus the theoretical depth of cut in uh, teal. And then if I happen to know what the depth of cut limit is for a particular bit due to uh, depth of cut limiters or perhaps just um, how much exposure the cutter has from the matrix of the blade, this black vertical line represents my maximum depth of cut for, cut for a particular bit. ECD sensitivity to ROP, uh, we've got a torque forecast for friction factor, if we're interested in seeing what would happen as we drill forward. And then we've got a minimum cleanup time, which is really no different than the plot that we have in planning. Uh, that's just letting us know how many bottoms up would be needed to circulate the whole clean before we trip at any particular depth. If we were to swap over to snapshot mode, what's a little bit unique about snapshot mode, you still get the same plots that you would in planning, but when I drag the bit up the well bore, as soon as I get into the region where I have actual data, all of a sudden you notice these black curves appear. Those black curves are calculated using the actual parameters that were recorded uh, instead of my sensitivity analysis. So my sensitivity analysis becomes very faint. You can just barely see the predicted loads. Uh, and the black line is what we calculate from the input parameters, the actual weight on bit, the actual RPM, the actual flow rate. So that black curve is going to jump around as, as you move the bit up and down the well bore, just depending on where it's located. Once you get beyond the depth of your last measured data, so I think it was below 22,000 feet, I didn't have any more measured data, then it reverts back to a forecast calculation. Black curve disappears because I don't have any actual data. All your standard plots are there, side forces, bending stress, standoff. Um, very similar look and feel to what you would have in snapshot view in the planning mode. So that's execution. Uh, it's not as complicated or as intimidating as it, as it may appear at first. You can use these plots for a variety of different things to anticipate whether or not you're drilling a clean hole or drilling a dirty hole. Uh, the mechanical specific energy can be quite helpful for drilling optimization. Uh, there's a, a wide variety of different applications for the different output here. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Leave some comments behind. Um, click like if you like what you see and let us know if you have any questions.